Hi, English 101, and welcome to Volume 3 of Stuff I Might Have Said in Class. Um, today I'm going to talk about general essay format as you're moving into writing your first essay as opposed to the topic proposal. So, essays. Essays are multi-paragraph pieces of nonfiction writing, and the format is three parts. Essays have an introduction, a body, and a conclusion and sometimes we teach that there are a certain number of paragraphs in each of those sections. That's not necessarily true. You can have as many body paragraphs as you want. There's usually one introduction, but sometimes if you're writing something really long, you have a whole chapter that's an introduction, right? And as you've seen in books that you're reading, long-form nonfiction. Okay, so a little bit about each of those parts what to do in the introduction. So your first paragraph, your introduction, since you're not writing long-form nonfiction, your introduction will probably be one paragraph. The first thing you want to do in your introduction is hook your reader. We call it a hook, you're trying to grab them and get, them their, get their attention. How can you do that? Well, you can ask a rhetorical question. You can include a striking quote from your research, properly cited, of course. You can tell a story, an anecdote related to your topic. What you don't want to do is just say, I am going to write about, and then tell us what you're going to write about, because we're going to know that pretty soon if we read what you've written. And that's not a way to grab your reader's attention. Okay, the next part I put is settle. I like to think about my introduction as just trying to settle my reader into my topic, giving them enough background information to sort of get started in their reading of my topic. I'm about to throw all of these sources that I've found from library resources and databases at them, and I don't want them to be overwhelmed by it. So I'm trying to settle them into what is the purpose of what I'm about to tell them. And then very last, I have my thesis. And the thesis can be either an argument in a research paper or a persuasive essay, or or it can be sort of a summary. In a, the survey of literature assignment, um, for instance, it will be more of a summary. So summing up what you found out about all of your sources. And there are some examples of that in the handout from the UNC Writing Center. The other, now the next part, once I'm through my introduction, is I got the body of my essay. And that's multi-paragraphs, right? Depending on how long your paper ends up being body, I drew a stick figure. Um, and what you're trying to have in each of your paragraphs is something called pie. P-I-E. The first thing you want to have is a point. Well, you always want to have a point, right? So you want to have a point in each of your paragraphs, and that's your own thoughts that relates back to your thesis. So I'll just draw you another little diagram here. So a point or a topic sentence is like a thesis for the paragraph. So if I have my thesis, all of my little topic sentences are like little satellites coming off of it. I'm drawing this as a diagram for you. Um, it's very beautiful. So I've got my thesis, and then I've got all of these little topic sentences that come off like satellites. And they all relate together. They're like a web. Now once I've made a point, so if my point is something like, there are many studies that have been done recently that show that people are not spaying and neutering their pets. Now I need to illustrate that with examples from my sources. So this is where I start quoting and paraphrasing from the information that I found through the library databases. And then I need to explain how those illustrations support my point. So the E is kind of telling how P and I are related. Okay? And this is less important if you're not writing an argument paper. This is like the meat of an argument paper. It's where you explain how you've come to your conclusions through your sources. This is less important if you're writing more of a summary paper, because sometimes if you're just summarizing, the uh, illustrations will speak more for themselves. And then once you've gotten through all of your information, included all of your sources, and remember you're trying to synthesize those together. So if my topic is many surveys show that people are not spaying and neutering their pets, then I may have found that information in more than one article. So all my quotes from all of those articles where I found that information are going to come in that paragraph. And then my next paragraph might say something like, homeless pets are a direct result of people's failure to spay and neuter. And then I've got all my information, all the sources I've gathered that have information on that topic. So you don't want to just, you know, summarize your sources one by one by one. You're trying to 
put them in your head, mix them all together, and have them come out in sort of a thematic organization. And there are also suggestions about that organization in a minute in this lecture. So then we come to our conclusion. And my big question in the conclusion is, so what? And conclusions can end up being really redundant, right? You don't just want to restate your thesis. And if you are going to restate your thesis, it, you don't want it to be exactly the same as it was in the intro. Your, th your conclusion is the last person that your lovely reader is going to hear from you, right? So you want to make a strong impression. So the question you're looking at is, why should the reader care about this? And that's what you want to put in the conclusion. So just keep asking yourself, so what? There are a couple of other things to think about while structuring your essay. Well, the first one is <laughs> upside down, organization. And there are lots of different ways to organize. And again, that Writing Center handout gives you some suggestions for how to organize the particular assignment you're working on. But you can always organize by theme or topic, right? So like I just talked about, you can organize by time or chronology. So chronology, it, you know, if you have a lot of different articles and some are from the 90s, you could say the general thoughts about um, girls learning about math in the 1990s were, and then sort of sum that up and talk about all your 90s articles. And then you could say, but then in 2000 to 2010 people thought this and then summarize those so that would be organizing by chronology if you have some of those historical sources and if they're important to your research the other one I have here is spatial and you're not really writing the kind of um, paper where that might be relevant right now but if you're ever writing a paper where you're sort of going through a space um, an analysis you might organize it that way Okay, next, once you've organized, you've got all these paragraphs, another thing to think about is the flow of those paragraphs or how they transition. So you want everything to kind of go together. And transitions are those spaces in between, these are two paragraphs, where you're going from one to the other and you don't want it to be abrupt. So you're always trying to sort of reference back when you're in this one to what happened in this one or sort of look forward in this one to what happened in this one while still keeping each paragraph focused on a single topic. The last bit is citation. Citation is very important. Um, it's important that you keep track of your resources and uh, that you cite them two ways when you come to put them in your paper. So we cite in a style in English called MLA. An MLA citation stands for Modern Language Association, and in some other disciplines they use other citation formats, like APA is American Psychological Association, or Chicago, or Turabian, or all kinds of crazy things. And there are two places where you want to cite when you cite. The first is in text, in parentheses. So if I've included a quote, after my quote, so my quotation marks end, and then I have these parentheses, and they have information in them. So here's my quote, and it, before the quote I would have something like, according to Dr. Smith, it's called a signal phrase, and you always want to introduce the quote with one. Then I would have my quote, and then afterwards, right after, I have these parentheses, and then the period goes at the very end. So if I have a lot, all my information, what goes in these parentheses is the author's last name and the page number. However, sometimes that's not available. So if the author's name isn't available, you're going to use the next thing that comes in the end citation. So that might be the title. Usually is. And you only have to use the first word of the title unless it's something like it, and then you might use a few words. So if it started with genetics, I'd put genetics, and I still got a page, so six. Well, what if I don't have a page? Well, if you don't have a page, you use the abbreviation NP for no page. If it's a short web article, you can use the paragraph number, but in some of these longer sources, you don't want to count paragraphs, so NP works. The second place you want to cite your materials is on a works cited page, and this should match back to all of your in-text citations. They serve as like a key or an index to get to the works cited page. So I see Smith, I should be able to turn right back to your works cited page and see Smith. They should match. That's very important. Um, these are your list of citations and I showed you in some other videos how you can generate those citations either through the um, through the databases themselves or using something like citationmachine.net or your Little Brown Handbook. And there's lots of information in the Little Brown going over how to use citation in the research chapter that I've assigned to you. 
Other little things about the works cited before, as you're revising, you want to make sure it's alphabetical, you want to make sure it's double spaced, and that it has a hanging indent. And I tried to demonstrate that there, but it looks super weird because of the mirror effect that I forgot about. But a regular indent, when you indent a paragraph, you indent the first line of the paragraph and not the others. Hanging is the opposite of that. So instead of indenting the first line, you don't indent the first line, but you indent the others after that. All right. Also remember MLA format and headings. And other than that, that is my lecture for today. Stuff I might have said in class on paper organization.